try it up again and see what happens. Take it up to seven grand. Was she all together at that? I think so. Let's try it anyway. why that piston blew. I must have dismantled over a thousand engines in this shop of mine. It taught me anything is that no two engines are exactly alike. Each one has its own private quirks. So while I'm stripping down an engine, I'm looking for those individual differences. And I haven't been disappointed yet. Or bored. It's like being a surgeon. My job is to study the symptoms, find the cause, and then cure it. I've been working for Frank ever since I got out of high school. But even before that, I hung around here with a couple other guys. Frank started finding work for us to do, for free. They stopped coming. I stayed. I like hanging around Frank's. Frank's a specialist. He doesn't do general repairs anymore. Frank actually calls manufacturers in Detroit to recommend modifications. Now listen, they know he's one of the best mechanics in the country. That's why I'm here. I was going to quit school and come here sooner, but Frank talked me out of it. My father, he held me out of it. My father made noise. Frank made sense. I started becoming a mechanic the day I decided I'd rather fix things than break them. First, it was old clocks. Then, model racing cars. Then, model airplanes. Then, real planes. World War II. Afterwards, I got a GI loan and opened my own place. That was 22 years ago. One day, a kid here told me he wanted to go to work for me right away. I told him, you quit school, you won't start working for me. To work in my place, you need a high school education, just for openers. I said, look, this is a garage, not a gas station. These aren't erector sets. They're a ton of piece of highly complicated machinery, and they're getting more complicated every day. In school, you learn to think. And anybody who thinks that thinking doesn't have to be learned well, he ain't thinking. Anyway, he stayed in school. Now he's working for me. Doing all right, too. But like most kids today, he's impatient. Wants it now. What he wants is something called instant skill. I don't carry it. He'll learn. <laughs> I wonder, what does Frank do on his day off? I've never seen him outside the shop. He's always there when I come in. He's there when I leave. What does he do on Sunday? Sleep? Watch the ball game? <laughs> Whatever it is, I bet he does it as carefully and deliberately as he does his work. Because, well, because he cares, you know? I like fiddling around the house. 
put a new washer in the faucet, mow the lawn. Sometimes my girls help me. Oh, this... Oh! Yep, they help me take twice as long as I would have alone. I'm so wet. To Frank, a sick engine's like a sick child to a good doctor. He really cares. A lot of guys in this business, they don't. They're not mechanics, they're grease monkeys. To most people, grease monkey is another word for mechanic. But they're really two different breeds of cat. The difference is precision. See, an engine's a precision instrument, and the mechanic knows this. The mechanic knows that one microscopic piece of dirt can foul up the whole thing. He knows that an engine has valves that open and then close, all in a hundredth of a second, at 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. The mechanic... The mechanic is the one you bring your car to after a grease monkey messes it up. Mechanic uses equipment that we smoke never heard of. I love the way it all goes together when it's right. I'm a kid about it. I feel good, like, uh, like a kid feels good. It's all clean and shiny, and it fits. It gets lonely sometimes, sitting up half the night in this place, just me and the machine. So why do I do it? place on half the staff and I want to. My wife says when I leave here at night I should put the place out of my mind. Well, some of the best work I've ever done though has been done here after hours. What she doesn't understand is that in a way automobiles are my mind. So how do I put my mind out of my mind? Of course if I said that to somebody I'd be put away. He understands. There's a look in his eyes when he sees an engine. <laughs> it's the same look a gambler has when he sees a deck of cards. I want to be a specialist. That's where the future is. Ignition men, transmission men, guys who do nothing but work on power steering or air conditioners. In the big shops, there are mechanics who never even touch a car. All they do is diagnose complaints. The way I see it, the day of the all-around general mechanic is over. The one guy who did everything himself. Automobiles are so complicated today. They're not automobiles anymore. They're transportation systems. A modern distributor puts out 400 sparks a second. And if anything's wrong, no spark. A ton of metal just stops. Cold. Things are changing too fast. Soon it'll be impossible for one man to keep up. It's impossible now. The general mechanic will soon disappear, like the GP in medicine. Like the dinosaur. This is a small shop, 
I do all my own work, and I deal with all my customers personally. When someone brings his car in and I drive it onto the back lot to look under the hood, I try to include him as much as I can. Like when I talk about the engine, I like him to see what I'm talking about. If he doesn't know much about cars, I take the time and the trouble to explain things to him in simple terms. It pays off in the long run. Now he's got a picture beforehand of what I'm going to work on. So when he sees the items on his bill, he won't be surprised or doubtful. Piston clearance. Ring clearance. Ring butt gap. Never assume it will fit just because it's supposed to. After you find the trouble, the idea is not just to put things back together, but to reassemble the engine better than it ever was. It's not just a finished thing or result you're after either. Each step, each part fitting, is problem solved. The process of working. That's what makes it worth putting in the hours I do. Frank reassembles an engine. He fits it together like it was made out of glass. Every moving part floating on a film of oil. Never really touching. Only a few molecules of oil are keeping them from tearing each other apart. How many times? It's like he's doing it for the first time. Every piston and rod and dancing. Exactly the same routine. Over and over again. Over and over again. And he never makes a mistake. Forty foot-pounds. Every nut and bolt is torqued down to exactly the right tightness. Because once it's installed, a bolt stretches, which puts a strain on the metal it's attached to. This has got to be allowed for in the tightening. Not approximately, not nearly, but exactly. After he's finished a job, he's always saying he could have done it better. I aim for 100% perfect, every time. And I hit 99 pretty often. Frank takes longer to do a job than most guys, and he charges more, but he does it right. Sometimes, when I'm working, my mind is a million miles away. And I'm thinking of everything but what I'm doing. Chick comes in, he doesn't see her. You talk to him, he doesn't hear you. And he's really thinking. Man, the whole world could go away, and you wouldn't miss it. There's nobody except him and that pile of metal. I think of my family. 
vacations we never took, fun we never had as a family. Simple, everyday things I'll never get to do because I'm in this bloody shop 12, 14 hours a day, six days a week, 52 weeks a year. For what? Rich, I ain't. Money doesn't matter to Frank, even though he must take home 15, 20 grand a year. He just likes the work, that's all. So I own my own place, big deal. By now I could have been a, a foreman in a big shop, nine to five, and time and a half for overtime. I could have had paid vacations. Some kind of myself, had a, without a damn engine looking up at me. Maybe I'd be better off doing something I liked less. against all of them out here and beaten them from time to time but that isn't why I'm here to see the people it's the machines they're a miracle the way they perform thousands of parts somebody put together moving doing everything to the limit oh there's somebody driving sure but it's the car that's doing it you put them together, but then they're on their own. It's like sending a kid out into the world, hoping you've done your job, and finding they can make it on their own. For that, I respect them. I even love them. You don't will a feeling like that. It just is. It's decided for you, in your gut. You've got to do what you love doing, and you've got to do it right, or you're nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> 